Dear viewers, salam alaikum and welcome back to the HIC podcast. Today we have two individuals who are avid servants of the community, active volunteers, and they serve throughout the year in various capacities. But the capacity we know them for is sports. And yes, these two individuals are Brother Sibtain Damji and Brother Abbasili Damani. Salam alaikum and welcome to the HIC podcast. Alaikum salam. Alaikum salam, Ahmed Abbas. How are you both? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. You? Yeah, very well, very well. It's the first time we've got two um, guests on the show, and how befitting that whenever I see either of you, you always come in a pair. So uh, it's it's nice that we've got two. What I see you two as is the, are the um, revivers of Shia sports and the pioneers of H HSC Husseini Sports Club. Um, so I want to get straight into it um, and really ask how really it, it all started. I know from a very young age, I saw both of you serving in various capacities and I see it now as well. But before I sort of ask that question, I think what I saw, um, and we'll come on to it towards the end of it, but I think this um, love of serving the community as a community as a whole really came from both your respective marhum fathers who played, no doubt played a huge role in your lives, but also left a massive mark on our lives and this community, uh, marhum Onali uncle and marhum Hussein Ali uncle. And I think um, you know, those two individuals have really, um, you know, left their legacy in the form of you two uh, and that this community as a whole benefits from from the service that you give, especially from the sports angle and beyond. And we can touch on some of the other services that you gave. I, I know that you've done a lot from a NIAS perspective. Uh, I know, Abbasli, you do a lot of external sort of PR for the mosque. Um, from an organization pers perspective, you are quite meticulous. I remember the COVID whole drive of the Muharram Majlis and everything. So, it's an open question to both of you. How did it all start? When did it all start? And and if you can give an overview of the journey since, I think, sort of mid 2000s. Yeah, OK, so I'll take that question. Um, so in 2008, when my mom and father passed away, um, I think at the time it was uh, Mebel Barwani who was running the club because there was no one um, actually in charge. So he took it on a voluntary basis. Um, and the the amount of work that my dad and his friends and other teams put into it, I just couldn't see it fall. Yeah. So um, I took a, I, I, well, I made a phone call to Abbasli, who of course everybody knows is a, a good friend of mine, uh, and said I needed a favour. I said, will you help me run the club um, and keep it going? And, yeah. um, and when normally someone asks for a favour, it's not like a 15 year, old, 15 year long favour. Yeah, I forgot to add that bit into okay. the thing a bit. Yeah, so uh, so I think uh, I caught him at a good time, and he said, "Yeah, okay, no problem." And I then also phoned uh, brother Mom uh, Mohani. Yeah, so he had a lot of experience in running uh, through college and also yeah. through Shia Sports. So I rang him and said, "Can you mentor us? Um, give us guidance?" And uh, Alhamdulillah, he also said uh, said yes, and. Um, I, it just it just went from there and uh, 15 years where 2008 yeah so 2008 yeah. and then we're still here present till today yeah, it's been an amazing journey and i think the thing you touched on around the mentoring piece i think that's a great sort of even piece of advice for the people who are viewing that whenever you you take on certain responsibilities always uh use the experience and knowledge of those that are you know that have a few more years and have sort of uh, benefited from from volunteering and they can share the insights and from then i remember quite vividly abasili about bushfield was a big thing we used to look forward to saturday nights and tell us more about the bushfield crash and all the things that followed us because when you guys came in there was a huge buzz i remember really i mean I, I remember playing football that's probably how i got into volleyball um i think there were other i'm pretty sure table tennis badminton so so you know can you elaborate on the bushfield it was journey? it was a phenomenal phenomenal event that we were having on a yeah. on a saturday i think uh we had four badminton I, about th yeah four three or four hours yeah i think in total we had football going on we had volleyball um our volleyballs and our volleyball players probably in the 20s or 30s was how many were playing at that moment which was yeah. which was a great number right um there was badminton going on there was table tennis that it was going really well and i think i remember right at the beginning we were sitting on the floor and it was Mebo Barwani and a couple of other guys. So I think maybe Ali Mawani, Hussein Jaffa were there. And they had an impromptu EGM sat right there on the floor and go, if we don't have a team coming in right now, then we're going to lose 
the people that will carry this forward mm. going on. And then I think it happened to only be a couple of weeks later after these guys come in in an interim basis that Sifta made the call, obviously picking it up. Sibi goes, you know, I need a, I need a favor. As we alluded, you know, 15 years later. Yeah. But this thing was, this Bushfield was great. You know, it was, it was a beautiful thing that we had and it went on for a long time. It catered for a lot of people, but it didn't cater for some. And I think it was the sum that ended up getting our sessions cancelled for the most. Mm. There was a miscommunication. I remember sitting at an EGM with the president at the time. Yeah. And we had a well-respected member of the community coming in, giving us uh, a letter that he read out saying that any funds that were being accumulated generally. Yeah were purposely being used for volleyball okay. and it yeah. wasn't they didn't say that it was being used for bushfield for the whole community it was just put in front of and i remember called well, what we must have been early 20s then sibi and we're sitting in front our first ever kind of like mm. interrogative position where we were and these uncles were shooting questions at us going oh is it just for volleyball is it and it went to a vote and we said that if people vote to cancel this Saturday, yeah. then we're never going to get that Bushfield sessions back. Sure. You know, we, we ended up having a crash there where you could come drop your kids so you can continue playing. We had little kickers going on during Madrasa, like straight after Madrasa hour, what football session is now. That was a little kickers then as well. Right. So we had all these things kind of like gro growing at the same time. And this was a key part of that that wheel that we were trying to build, you know, th this machine that we're trying to get going, that was a key feature of it. Yeah. And whether the community looked at a couple of early 20 year olds going, these guys don't know what they're doing. They don't understand how yeah. the world works. It went to a vote. Surprisingly, it went to a vote, even though we pleaded that once we lose this Saturday, you know, the whole community is coming to this session. Once we lose this Saturday, we'll never get it back again. And it was only like last year we got asked, can you get it back again? And, you know, council own building, council regulations, council hours, we lost it. Yeah. It's a really interesting point you raised and the bit around the point around the funding. I want to come back to that later on and I want to ask a, a few more specifics. Um, but it's a brave move. Um, if you look at the organisations more generally, I might be wrong, but I think you are probably, A, the youngest um, especially at that, at that sort of 2008 phase where youngest individuals take charge of a, a Khoja sports club, club, especially in the sort of the, the West and Europe. And, and probably still, if you look at all the other clubs that we have um, in our sister Jamaats and, and wider sort of other, other Jamaats and the other regional federations, I think you're probably one of the youngest to take on and, and to be able to face some of those challenges. I don't think that was a sort of an easy ask. Um, but tied to that question you know who are the individuals i guess again open question you know you had you you had your challenges but i think you mentioned some names at the start it'd be interesting to know who and you also had quite a strong sort of ladies support as well there was a really strong i remember the ladies sports club was very active as it is today um but who are the individuals that sort of helped you move along that journey and you know there's some names that you you know you will fondly remember if i can put this one to sib sib then so yeah so they're Oh, there's loads of names and um, I don't want to miss anybody out, but of course, uh, apologies if I've missed anybody out. But the names that come to my mind are, um, you've got Mebarani and his team, like we mentioned, uh, Hasnain Jaffa, Ali Mawani, um, when they took it over at that time. We had um, <coughs> Sister Fatim Ismail and her team. Um, I have to give her a special mention because she was the one that then introduced uh, the mini Shia sports at mosque. So to allow ladies to be able to play sports, she brought a team in and they looked after kids, I think from a very young age to the age of four. Um, so she she did tremendous work for the, the ladies uh, team. Um, we've now got Hannah uh, yeah. Damani and her team that are absolutely doing a phenomenal job. Um, there's other people like Dr. Jiwa, yeah. um, Riz Remtula, uh, my brother-in-law, Shabi Sadek, uh, Wasim, who's no, not here anymore, he's in uh, Dubai, but he was uh, an amazing help for, he 
like me, him, and Abbasli at the time. Yeah, it was, some, a, it was a yeah. We did powerful some powerful trio. Yeah, we did some, but but he he kept you. Yeah, but we but with the organized. trio, we were always blessed with a team. But yes, the list can go on. We've been supported like crazy with loads of people. Like until today, like we get people. Uh, I'll, I'll mention someone. Uh, your dad. So this is a real, real little story. Um, when there was rumors many years ago that we were going to step down because you know mm. we've been for fifteen years. Yeah. Your dad, I think, phoned Abbasli, and like literally had a massive go at him, saying, "You step down, and that's it. We're not talking anymore." I think I vaguely have some sort of recollection. I don't think we've, my dad and I have spoken about this, but I think I, I've heard about this. Um, you know. And I think I want to go back on the thing. You do have a good team. You have a very strong team. Um, but what you've shown, and I, I say this genuinely, you've shown, um, there's one thing about uh, talking theory about how you can lead a team and all that. But I've seen genuine leadership from my perspective because you've gone through, you know, some real big challenges over the last 15 years in, in various capacities. You know, some maybe some probably too detailed for this forum. But where where you've needed to show leadership and your your styles complement each other, you've really you've had to make difficult decisions. There's times when you've had to adopt silence. There's times when you've had to take measures, and and each time you've had to show, you know, a massive amount of leadership. And I think you know, um, whether you mentioned my dad's example, Abdulankar's example, I can say a lot that you know, when when we talk about the club, even when I sort of travel and everything, you know, the the leadership of the club is renowned because it's it's. Um, it's been led by people who are experienced and but people who want to do it for the sake of moving things forward um and and you know wherever you know there'll be a time when you hand over the reins and I'll come on to that separately um but that you know that mentorship that you know and, and that sort of guidance that will never go away um I, you know i think the good thing about us two working together is that we though we complement each other we have this open honesty with each other as well. Yeah. If one of us is doing something wrong, we will say that the other one has done something wrong or is not the right path to do it. Yeah. And we will discuss it and we may we may have shouted, we may not have spoken for a few days. You know, it's like a, um, how can I put this as nicely as I can? Uh, it's the first marriage, maybe, yeah. you know, and you don't speak for a few days and then after a little while you realise, okay, you know what, I might be wrong and he might think he might be wrong. You know, and... I also think that our leadership styles have come because of our life experiences. Yeah. You know, we we were both in a leadership role early on in our life, in our businesses. You know, Sibi working for the bank, me at the shop. Yeah. And, you know, we obviously had the loss of our fathers both at a relatively young age. Absolutely. And yeah. you get put that pressure on you to kind of step up. And I think we leaned on each other at that time. You know, really supportive. Um, without going into too much details, I think we are effectively a clutch for each other. You know, like yeah. we, we were walking together hand in hand, let's say, across yeah. an icy skating rink or whatever it was, you know, walking partner. Yeah, as, no, as my brother would it, say. You know, it's it's not an easy position. Um, and just on that, actually, what's happening with the sports hall? No. Okay, so the sports hall is. Um, the sports hall should have been built if i'm going to put it honestly it should have been built i think it was around 2010 2011 uh they were drawing up the principal designs for the al Qayyim site and we as a young team yeah as you've said came in and said hey guys why don't we have this open space as a sports hall similar to what toronto have where if it's an overflow yeah, room, and, and that's why I ask because I think there's there, there's there's multiple versions of this, and and I've when I go to uh, when I see what what happens in other, especially in that side of the world, the, the sort of Americas and Canadas, um, there's a huge benefit, and that's why I've asked, and I and so I want you to be open about you know the version you know the the single version of the truth, which is you know effectively from from yourselves, and just kind of get that perspective. So yeah, I'll put you on the spot on the spot again about the sports hall. Yeah, so. So we've, we've, pr we've. It was meant to happen. It was meant to happen. And at the um, open forum for the building project, we sat down with Sajad Banjwani, came up with some plans, and I think he's probably still got them somewhere. And we drew up a, a hall that had 
a reception area, a sports hall, a viewing balcony, all that sort of stuff, you know, and even a gym inside of it. And that was going to be in, within the vicinity of the wider sort of mosque area? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it would have been as part of, the ladies would have still had their hall and it yeah. would have been as part of included within that hall. Um, we presented our idea and it, and it went forward. We presented it to the building team and the building team said, yeah, we'll take your proposal forward to an open forum where everybody can give their feedback. And so we stood up on the mic and we gave our ideas and there was a lot of people positive for it. Um, yeah. Everybody was like, we can see the vision that these, they say kids, right? But you know, we were, again, we're mid twenties now. Uh, to some you're mid twenties now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I wish we were. I wish we were. I wish we were. <laughs> yeah, um, but at the time you were still very young. Yeah, yeah. We can't have been no more than twenty five, twenty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we're you know stepping up in front of elders of our community, very learned, yeah, uh, experienced guys. And we were like, look, we believe this is the vision that will take this community forward for the next twenty, thirty years, yeah. where people will be coming to play and then going to go pray. Um, it got passed around, you know. Um, we were looking at how can we get funding for this as well. So as part of our tentative plans for funding, I met with uh, Huntingdonshire uh, City Council to ask them if we registered ourselves as a sports hall for a badminton club, would mm. we get funding? And they said, you probably get six figure funding. So when I presented this in our closed meeting, uh, word travels very quickly to which when the ladies got their opinion put forward. Yeah. Uh, the thing that kind of put the nail in the coffin, let's say, yeah. was <laughs> on Ashura, the Shia sports boys are going to hire out the hall for Dorias to play badminton. And we've had to sell our wedding gold to build this sports hall. Okay. So that was the straw that broke. That, that one, back. that one broke. That, that, after that, that it just nosedived. And then I would say probably around 2017, 2018, um, the building, this current building, you know, the Alkaim site has, uh, has been built and we now have a bit of excess land that we're looking at. So we sit down with a team then as well and we start discussing our ideas, pulling stuff forward. At that time, there was a preschool as well. So we're bringing in the concept of a yeah. preschool. We hire an architect. We go out and we start engaging uh, with the city council. We put in, in a planning application. They come back asking us to make a few amendments. We go back to the planning uh, portal, put it up, speaking to the planners. And then the guy that is with just disappears. And wow. we don't hear from him for three months. We don't hear from him for six months. And then we, we're following up and there's a new person taking over the case. And like, oh, that, mm. we, we have no idea what this case is. The person just abruptly left all their work on the table. They just got up and went. We, we have no idea what your project is. Okay, so we'll sit down and we'll have your project. Sure, we'll sit down around, let's say in about three or four months time, we want to clear his backlog. By the time they got to us, it was COVID. COVID came and put an end to that project straight away. Everything was just yeah. shut down for two years. By that yeah, time, yeah. the nursery has shut down. So now the nursery has shut down. So you're back to square one. So we're back to square yeah. one. But that doesn't mean that the dream is over. Absolutely. I genuinely believe that, you know, and, and I'm saying this openly to anybody. You want to build it? Let's build it. You want our help? We'll help you. You want our guidance? We will guide you. You want our drawings? We'll pass them to you. If you're scared to do it, come join us. Because it's not a name on the door. It's giving the opportunity for the community to play on site for the ladies and the children to feel safe in an environment yeah. where you are right now. And then come and pray namaz. And at 10 o'clock at night, boys, let's go play some badminton. Girls, let's go play some netball. Kids, let's go hit some cricket. And this is what we want to build. We want to build a, an, a whole complex rather than having to drive 15, 20 minutes away to an area where it won't serve any purpose. People will stop coming to mosque and go straight over there. We mm. have a vision, yeah, and, yeah, and we're hoping to get there. Yeah, and and it's it's aligned with uh, what I said um, when I um, interjected. The benefit of having it in one site, I've I've seen it in in different communities, and there's no substitute. But let's uh, I'll put you on the spot then. 
someone comes up to you, up to you today, Mr. Bande Khuda, and says, "Yes, let's do it." What's the runway? How 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 quick can this get done? Is it are we are we talking eighteen months, twelve years, or somewhere in between? Um, other things being equal, if things fall in our favor, yeah, and the meetings that we have lined up for the next month or the next two months in looking at opportunities around the mosque. I would say if this Bande Khuda was on serious table and said, hey, I heard you guys are building a sports hall, which may also include, you know, uh, a canteen so you can make it into a wedding venue, uh, you know, maybe having a gym in there and stuff like that. I could see us getting it done in two or three years. I'm that confident. Okay, so it's, it, it's, it's genuinely, a, a, it could be achieved in the in the touching distance. We're not talking another 15 year. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. This is, this is if... The opportunities present itself properly and our meetings go well. You know, I'm, I'm never giving up on this idea, right? So if the meetings go well, then yeah, in three years' time, we could have our own sport tour. Yeah. I think it's one to take offline and, and see if we can try and move forward, even if it takes five years. I think, you know. 100%. You, know, it's you, only for you the two are still community. in your mid 20s, you'll still benefit from it as well, <laughs> as will I. Um, before I come on to Sipten, I want to touch on one of the, you t- touched on the hunts bit, hunting and share. Um, you've been doing uh, a lot with the wider, so outside of the Khoja, Shia, uh, Ethan Ashari scene. I know you're involved with Posh and where you, we did the, the shoot there. Um, you mentioned Hans. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've done stuff with the FA. And this is just things I'm really off the top of my head. So yeah, okay. so tell us what happens in that side of your, because that's all linked to mosque. I don't think that's a private thing you do. It's You do it and I'm pretty sure it's a, it's linked with HSC and SS. So, so can you elaborate on that side of your? Uh, yeah, I, I've been blessed. I, I, Alhamdulillah, I've been, I've been blessed to be given the opportunity to serve our community in a massive, massive platform. You know, I remember organizing a conference at Wembley Stadium, and wow, we had yeah, and we had. I think most of the Jamaats have turned up to that one. You know, there was about hundreds of us in attendance. Mm, and yeah, you know, yeah. that was beautiful you got to oversee the pitch and this was done you know many many years ago i think what it came down to was how can i give the opportunity for people who don't know what muslims are like and only seeing what muslims are like in the media you know following horrific incidences that happen globally so i was saying what can i do myself that gives the community the platform to stop everybody looking at us thinking that, you know, these guys are bad people, Muslims are bad people. You know, Sibi carried the Olympic torch down Borges yes, Boulevard. Yes, yes, right? I recall this. You know, I, I went to the uh, Olympics as a, as a volunteer, all in the name of saying that we're representing our community. And it followed on from that, that we ended up, I, got, I went to St. George's Park where England trained for football, you know, um, met people in Peterborough United with the assistance of Sibi again. You know, and it's all about putting ourselves on on a platform so people within Peterborough, but maybe people who see it kind of globally will be like, oh, you know what? That community are quite progressive. You know, when we go get our hair cut, the person that's telling us says, I admire your sports club. You are a progressive sports club. He's amazed when we say we have about 100 ladies playing sports a week. A progressive sports club. Yeah, and, and I've heard the same, actually, um, from the same... From the same yeah, we shop. go to the same barber. Absolutely, <laughs> um, but I've heard the same actually about uh, about the sports club. So that's incredible. And I wanted to come on to sip then and ask uh, a question, uh, which you can or you can't answer. Uh, it's entirely up to you. But you know, you faced a lot of challenges. I think one of you mentioned about how when you were in your mid twenties, you were facing some pretty serious allegations and accusations. So, you know, what are the challenges that you faced? And then you know. Why don't you relinquish your position as the leaders of this sports club? Oh, I'm going to start off with I wish I could. Um, <laughs> we have loads of challenges and I think the challenges are probably more perception. Um, yeah, People think we do things for ourselves. Um, and I believe, or we believe, that uh, we've proven many, many times that we don't. We, we call it down the line as much as we can. Um, yeah. not, not going to say we are perfect. We've we've made many mistakes in the past, um, and uh, and we've learned from it. And we'll always 
admit our mistakes if we've done something wrong we'll we'll put our hands up and say you know what we we we've did something wrong um some people think i'm a dictator um uh, I, 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 don't I don't think you're a dictator, Sim. Uh, thank you, thank you. You're uh, welcome. Oh, well, sorry, was I supposed to say I don't think you're a dictator? <laughs> <laughs> that some person is sat right next yeah. to you. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so some people think I'm a dictator. Um, and I don't think it's dictator. I think it's uh, me personally, I'm, I'm going to talk about myself here. It's just the passion I have for the club. Um, I take things really, really personal because uh, we've seen it go from... Uh, a very low point to mm. really high points at some yeah. points um but we welcome it uh, i I'll, I'll say a message on this uh podcast if if you believe that you guys want to come and do it me abasli and minha will happily sign it over to you guys and uh and we'll even guide you we'll even mm. guide you if you want guidance from us but if you believe that we're doing a real bad job please step in I think it's a really interesting point because first thing you said, you know, we took it from a low, low point to some high points. You know, one thing we have to remember is progression is never linear. You don't just go like that. There will be low points. There will be high points. But fundamentally, the club was here. The club is here now. That's the first thing. And the second thing um, around the dictator thing, you know, if I just share my thoughts on it, you know, there is an AGM every year. This is not a... And it's 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 a process um, which is which which follows... Uh, the the correct sort of protocols that it needs to follow. So I think, on that perspective, what about Abbasli? What about these accusations? You know how how because that you gave me an example of one. I'm sure there's an accusation every other week. So when you're facing these accusations, where do you draw the line? Where do you know? Okay, this is I need to take a firm approach. Here I need to take soft approach. This this is just noise, so I just ignore it. This is valid, so I have to address it. Where where how do you know? Because I've seen, you know, in the last fifteen odd years. There have been challenges and you have overcome them and generally it's been amicable in the end. But kind of, you know, how do you deal with it? Because it's not easy. It, it's not easy. You know, I remember one of the first ones coming out of this Bushfield one was the accusations that were flying. You know, this is volleyball. You guys are in it for a monetary gain. And they really hurt. You know, those, those yeah. accusations really, really hurt. And I remember going home thinking, is this for me? You know, I've, I've I've given a commitment to sit then. You know, we're doing it to honour our fathers. But is it really for me? And you kind of ponder about it and you start growing a bit of a, a thicker skin going, forget about that one guy. Forget about another guy. We're doing this for the better of the community. Mm. Then, you know, you keep progressing. You keep trying to take it forward and you'll come up with a, another obstacle. You know, there's been instances maybe over the last few years, uh, it, it got really challenging. People think that we are immune to her. I am, I, I, and I'm going to be honest, I remember going home and, I, you know, another one of our strong supporters, uh, Sajjad Jivraj, I remember opening up to Sajjad Jivraj, telling him that I'm, I'm close to crying. Like one of the decisions that I've made is really, you know, it, it was never my intention to hurt anybody hurt the club hurt the progression of where we were going mm. and it was in a split instance that you know circumstances were taken out of my control yeah but a different message was put across and i got blamed really badly and i remember going home and telling saj and you know sitting in a secluded room being close to tears going what have i done you know i'm 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 still a human, right? And yeah. I genuinely believe that our sports club has progressed and gone further than where it was previously. Yeah. And it's only going to get stronger with taking on everyone's opinion on board, opening to ideas. As Sibi said, we're not a closed shop. You know, we, yeah. they may call him a dictator, but it's not nothing like that. We're no. open to so all So what ideas. I'm hearing is actually, you've had instances, there's been challenges, things have been said, you know, maybe wrongly, you know, and in a way which you don't agree with, but it sounds like from from a position of leadership and authenticity, you sometimes do need to be the bigger person in order to move forward. I don't know if that's a fair fair comment. Yeah, I think it's a fair comment. Uh, yeah. I think uh, it takes a bigger person to accept as well that, you know, that something's gone wrong. Um, and maybe it's not the fault of ourselves, but 
to men that we, we, we're, we're running a club. It's a we, difficult situation because yeah. when you're in that position and you've got Shia Sports or HSC now uh, in front of you, there are probably things you can do and get this sorted. But then you're thinking, right, the, you know, it's like my baby, this club. I don't want the club to get damaged. And I think you always have to keep that. And, and, and that's, to be fair, that's quite admirable. But, but just to flip that then, so there's been a few challenges, but I think on the whole of the last 15 years, it's been a great journey. And inshallah, it continues to be, to, to, to be sort of a, an amazing journey that bears more and more fruit. You know, we've got so many, um, I was in Madrasa only last week and there's so many children, you know, they all need this. And sports is something that brings us together. Um, you know, sometimes yes, there might be divisions, but fundamentally, I think it's fair to say that our friendship and relationship, the basis of that has been sports. And I could say that with so many people uh, in this community. Um, let's not go into too too much specific about which sport we've sipped in. Yeah, um, but in, over the last, say, 15 odd years, what is the question for, I'll start with you, Sip then. Um, you know, what are your top three sort of memories that you're fond of that you look back with? Either you laugh or the, your reactions are telling me there's things that maybe you can't say, but the things that you can say, what can you tell us? Yeah, no, um, if I'm going to keep it PG. Uh, so the best one is, one of them is when we did our fun days. Yes. Yeah, our fun days were... You're taking uh, all these points. Yeah. I've, I've got, yeah. When we first started, we did so many fun yeah. days to launch membership and so forth. And that was... That was amazing. Um, the the second one was um, Mount when we hosted Mount. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so we did a live draw, um, and that was that was brilliant because uh, using social media, we reached out to someone who lived in London, and he said he could come and do before we had our amazing AV team that we have now, but. He said he could come yeah. and do a live draw for us. And uh, so I told the team, I was like, yeah, I've got someone coming from London. I remember this, yeah. And uh, the guy turns up in a, I think it was a Citroen C1. And uh, we all sat there thinking, what has this guy got in his car that is going to be amazing? And he pulled out equipment that we've never seen before in our really? life. Really? Um, and that was, uh, that was, uh, that was. This was the, vo was it a volleyball draw? This was the whole map draw. It was everything. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, well, all the group the stages world. and everything like that. Uh, and uh, I remember my house just being full of uh, map stuff. Where, like we we're doing all the prep work at my mm. house. And the third one, the third one, I'll, I'll actually is it's when Mom and Dismal, as AKA Mancini, mm. when he uh, formed the youth team. When we when Mount introduced like the 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 youngest years for uh, football. And he he pulled in a team, uh, Ali Zaman, uh, Ali Mawani, yeah. Muzammil. Um, You've said Ali Mawani about ten times, but you have to clarify uh, which this one. This is uh, Muhammad Mawani, Ali Mawani. Uh, and the other Ali Mawani was <laughs> Ali Asghar Mawani. Asghar Ali. Asghar Ali Mawani. Oh God, don't yeah. So he 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 made that team, and I think that was one of my proudest moments because. Let's be honest, Peterborough's not always on the map when it comes to map. Yeah, and so what was specific about that team? These guys thrashed everybody. Really? Yeah, I remember yeah. Our, our Abbas Mirali <coughs> used to come every map and like, see the team and cry and say, why are you guys bringing this team in? Because they just literally batter everybody. And it's good to see that team still together to the, till today. Yeah, I mean, they're probably in their 20s now, I think. Yeah, yeah, also now known as the Pandas. But, uh, it's a shout out to the Pandas. Oh, okay, is that anything to do with those shoes or? No, it's um, actually something to do with Mamt. Uh, the new stuff, the software that they used gave them a name, Panda. Uh, okay. It just it just picked random names and uh, they just stuck with it. I thought when you said Mama this man's name, you're going to re reference that tournament that my team won in 2004 Al Qaim when your brother almost <laughs> put me in hospital. This is proper a proper tournament. Uh, okay, <laughs> no, we won that one, so you don't take that away. Okay, and so Abbasli, what about you? What are the top three sort of fond memories that you remember from? Oh man, I think Sipten took most of them. So uh, it, I think it, within our, one of our first few years, uh, we ran the tuck shop for Mohoram and we were selling magic corn mm. and, and burgers without any ventilation. And I remember us burning our eyes and putting too much- Is this when you were making the milkshakes and everything? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we put too much chili powder inside someone's sweet corn and- we were was that on purpose? Sweets. No, it was by accident. 100% it was by accident. We believe I'm you. very sorry. Um, and you know, it was, they, 
we alhamdulillah we made some good money at that time that kept the bushfield sessions going for that little bit longer interesting okay and, and so you know we put in the graph then that that is probably up there as one of them i think another one was when we were when it was during covid uh we managed to get peterborough united some of their players uh yeah. to, on a podcast we even had some of their players come around mosque and ate samosas and stuff like that yes. so those sort of uh, interfaith mm. uh, things are, are up there with with some of the great things that we've done obviously Wembley Stadium you know being able to represent yeah. a whole community at Wembley Stadium is is absolutely crazy but i i genuinely believe my proudest moment is when a kid comes up to us and goes uncle uncle is there sports because yeah wow. we 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 don't that's profound we don't organize the sports right we're not the captains we just kind of make sure that the ball is rolling and these guys carry a lot of the weight you know the guys that do the uh SSBA the football academy badminton academy the ladies uh badminton ladies netball the gents football volleyball squash badminton intermediate badminton golf which is now taken off massively swimming you know cricket i can't i'm i'm i can keep going and going these are the guys that carry the club mm. these are the guys that actually really do the hard work it's easy for us to sit in this chair and say wow we do this this and this those guys are the real hard ones and so when it's honorable when these kids are coming up to us and saying uncle is it sports sport? and that literally just happened like an hour ago and and that gives you so much pleasure wow. knowing that you are recognized as But an it, uncle it, as an uncle yeah yeah as an uncle you are recognized that actually you are approachable yeah yeah and you asked. are the person that you can ask about sports yeah ask about sports you know i get we get texts now that the planner has changed we get texts i get texts he gets texts go in brother can you point me in the direction for this sport my kid wants to play can you point me in the direction yeah. of that sport and, you know that's that's what our responsibility is to give the opportunity for a kid to play yeah so in terms of and that's really interesting because there's there's a there's a whole array and that's probably i've just asked you for 3 i could have probably asked you for 10 each and you just still told me i think something that's been you know a big highlight of you know in recent months is the is the name change so you know it's uh why not shia sports and why husaini sports club um i think we took a very long consultation period mm -hmm. and we asked the you know our community we're thinking of rebranding i think um I was watching a TV show Jack Ryan I'm hoping I said the name correct Jack Ryan okay thank god right I only watched one season and I found it really boring but I was watching that and this had come up a few times at our previous AGMs you know a couple of uncles had said I think you should give the change the name is not protecting our youth when they're entering in leagues you know the other communities don't have the name shia in there they have a symbol of shia let's say you know hussein yeah. or jafar right so we should be inclining to go that way because it's our kids are being exposed in a world where they may, may not have the tools to protect themselves in an environment which is out of their control so we we didn't really much think about it but it was a a, a ponder on our mind for a few months and a few years and then we were watching jack ryan and he's reading his book and the guy comes up to him and he goes are you reading about you know the recent bombings and he's like yes and he said on which side the shia or the sunni and the guy replied back going the shia side and i'm like if this is so open on tv is my responsibility is siptan's responsibility is at that time it's minhal's responsibility to protect the kids Yeah. If 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 a TV show is showing it so openly and these uncles are now telling us you need to change the name maybe it is time actually we really need to change the name. Yeah and the beauty is you 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 you've kept it as Shia as it could be 100% Husseini and it's a line and the branding is Oh yeah, beautiful. yeah, yeah. our mother is called Husseini HIC TV HIC podcast HIC podcast HIC Yeah volunteers. it's a great name so who chose it Was that was that uh was that a dick tutorial decision or was it a democratic decision sip then no we actually what we did was we sent a, an email out and a message actually to the members of the mosque and we asked them to submit some names 
and to be honest, that was the most popular name that came through. What other what other names? There was Jaffrey Sports Club. Yeah. Um, there was uh, she Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so people. Some people actually said just keep the name. Okay. Uh, okay. Fair uh, enough. I can't remember off the top of my head all of them, but Husseini. It, a lot of them were around Husseini. Um, just different variants of the the club, but uh, Husseini Sports Club. Did you get any wild suggestions? No, actually, no. To, to be honest, uh, we actually got pretty good. Did ones. you get anyone say Jack Ryan Sports Club? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Anders. <laughs> Anders. yeah. No, um, no. Actually, they were all decent ones. So we just picked the most popular one. And sometimes you need you need sort of a bit of a you know we saw we've seen various societies and you know it's not like the mosque is changing a constitution. You're just sort of rebranding. Fundamentally, we you know the the name is is sort of you know who we are known by. Um, externally as well and it's, it's quite important so um, and talking about names and external tell us about the unity games that are coming up I hear there's some um, things in the pipeline that are going to be quite interesting and exciting uh, over the years to come especially <coughs> specifically about the uh, the unity games yeah so um, as we've mentioned through this podcast we well, we're always learning so um, we when we took this new name change on, um, we also took a vision on that we need to run our club slightly different. We've got to be, uh, we've got to start looking for the future. Um, and because we always, always used to plan for now, but we need to look a bit forward. And I'm, I'm going to give credit to uh, one individual, uh, that's uh, Mahmoud Rajani. He's, okay. a, he's a new member to the community. Yeah. Uh, and he, and this is again something Abbasli just touched upon when a youth comes up to you and says, "Uncle, when's uh, the next football? When it is?" <coughs> this 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 guy uh, Mahmoud he has ultimate passion for community, which was great to see. He literally every time we meet, he's always sort of talking to us about what's next, what's this. So he called me and Abbasli into a meeting, and he said to us why we're not sending anybody to the recent unity games mm. um <clears throat> and we didn't understand the uh sort of uh, what's the word impact yeah the impact and how the the exposure of this game is or how yeah. big they were they were it was massive so he was explaining to us like how because he's from he's, he's from canada originally sure. uh, so he was explaining to us how their club there runs and uh this is when we came up with the idea of uh sponsorship um, as you can probably see, I'm, I'm advertising it here nicely, but we've got kits now with uh, uh, people that have sponsored us. Um, and uh, we thank the sponsors as well, because without them, you know, we won't be able to get these kits out there. That's a nice, uh, on a, sorry, on a side note, I still have, um, I'll touch on this actually separately, uh, the Rising Stars hoodie from 2007. Uh, but yeah, carry on. <laughs> so he, he was just telling us ideas of how like we can raise funds and how we can go forward with stuff. So um, inshallah, we're, what we're planning as a club is 2027 is uh, apparently the next Unity Games. And uh, yeah. inshallah, we're looking to take some ladies, some gents to this game and represent uh, Husseini Sports Club and I think it's, it's 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 vital for, especially for the youth, to be able to network um, across the globe. Um, yeah. And I'm pre is it going to be in Dubai? I assume it's uh, we assume, wherever, yeah, it is, where, wherever um, it is. Yeah. You know, it's it's a good opportunity for the for the youth to sort of meet their counterparts. You know, that have traveled from across the world. So, in terms of this Unity Games in 2027, if we're planning to send people, then uh, how many people do we have today, and what is the sort of future vision more more broadly? Um, Approximately, right right now, we have roughly about 200 members. And I'll probably say it's around an equal split yeah. between ladies and gents. Um, and that's because of the phenomenal work the ladies team are doing. Uh, 200 members? 200 members. That's incredible. Yeah, so... and we Because there's going to be people who are not necessarily members that also participate. Yeah, yeah. so we have, we have around about 200 members. Like I said, we have sports pretty much every day, uh, bar Thursday, because it's Jumeirad. Um, and, and also, sorry to cut you, but uh, you also, I remember even when I was um, in the administrative team, you you consult the calendar, the World Federation calendar, the Jamaat calendar way in advance to make sure that none of your 
And it's quite meticulous actually. None of your events clash with the wafat or shahada be it day, be it eve. Um so I just wanted to clarify so it's not just Thursday, it's beyond that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so we'll always pre-plan and yeah, we had many we had many many calls in regards to uh uh when uh events will be taking place at mosque. So we always we always make sure cuz we say about the members, we say about the captains, the mosque can play a massive part in the club as well. Yeah. Without the support of the mosque um we wouldn't be where we are today and i think more more broadly i think uh i think it's fair to say generally you know committees come and go but hsc shia sports has always been a a, a cornerstone as is madrasa but this has been sport like i said before sports brings people together it builds confidence and 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 um the reason i mentioned the point around wafats and kushali etc is that's the level of meticulous planning you need and it's not easy you're not organizing one volley you're not captain for one you're overseeing the whole thing and i mean golf i'm in the golf group there's i can't keep up with the whatsapp messages that's just one and then there's table tennis and then there's badminton of course there's different types of football you know un, uh, under 8 and under 18 and all the other age categories so so having all that there's a lot of work just in that element let alone all the other things um so what advice would you give one piece of advice each uh to people so when you eventually move on to a more of a consulting role for HSC what advice would you give to the next um chairman of Husseini Sports Club Muntazir Ramdani <laughs> <laughs> but whoever comes in next what well, i mean he's in your peer group of course but what advice would you give to the next it'll be essentially it'll be the sort of it'll be a next generation type of thing my my advice would be uh coming with coming with some friends I I think I couldn't have done this without Yeah, that's uh, profound. Uh, yeah, a friend circle that supported me. So that would be my one advice. If you're going to come in, come in with a team that you can work with because that always helps uh the process. And Abbasli, what about yourself? What one piece of advice would you give to the next uh youth or whoever wants to come in and take this uh quite important position in HSC? Uh mine would be are you doing it for yourself or are you doing it for the community? Yeah. I I think that's that's fundamental to that will be fundamental to your decision making are you doing it for the betterment of yourself or are you doing it for the betterment of the the wider community okay i want to come on to some we're, we're towards the end of a podcast um i want to come on to one specific point and then we'll come on to some of these quick fire questions uh i touched on rising stars so that's been i want to just uh, <sighs> get maybe 30 seconds on that uh, on the rising stars piece because i think maybe that came before or after the shia sports thing um or or getting involved but more specific I think it was before because I remember we had newsletters and stuff and maybe this is probably more for a smaller group but the reason I'm asking that question is because I remember going to Sweden but what I've seen from the both of you beyond that is the networking and you know you you are you have a really strong network in the UK across Europe and no doubt even beyond just you know what would be under that that, that sort of college umbrella So what how have you managed to foster these relationships how did you manage to get a group of youth to travel to Sweden and to be fair if it wasn't for the the commitments of the people who who normally go to these things these things could have been a lot you know it could have happened every year and you can make it happen so just just maybe a couple of minutes on that you know the relationships that you've got across the board um rising stars was a vision um to try and bring youth into volleyball um um I I'm not saying it was a uh, an idea presented by my mother and father but my mother and father was very fond of youth mm. being in sports um hence why he used to do the um, amp stuff with uh, Zulianka and Dr. Jiwa um so what it was was I wanted to get my friends in to play volleyball so what we did was we went round recruiting um and I say friends I'm saying not just within my circle outside of our circle just to say come and play volleyball. Yeah, I mean uh, I was not technically in your circle then. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Maybe still you're, not. Yeah, you you're too busy reciting <laughs> <laughs> or playing squash. Um <laughs> So uh, so yeah, so we just we, and, and and that's where the networking started to be honest because we would then yeah, okay. com- communi- uh, communicate with other jamats. Um and I got to give kudos to the college uh, umbrella because that's what's given us the network to be able to go out there. Sweden was a funny one. Um Sweden uh Trollhattan they used to come every year to Mount 
And I think they went to various jamaat saying, oh, come down, come down. And of course you get the friendly, yes, inshallah, we'll come. They've never met people like us before. Because when they invited us, we came down literally like two months later. <laughs> um, but that was, it was, it, yeah, but it was an amazing trip because it was good to see how other countries, should we say, uh, run their sports and uh, what kind of facilities they have available to them because they had a sports hall that they could open and close whenever they wanted. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, but in regards to networking, um, it was, I, I would give kudos to the college umbrella because you, you can speak to so many different people. Um, and I just want to add one point. Uh, and this is why we're taking a different mindset to the club. We were approached by many other Jamaats, and I'm talking about big Jamaats, to say, how are you guys doing what you're doing? And I think maybe this is a fault of our own, um, but we never took any plaudits from it. We just we like to help. We don't like to take any sort of claims to it. It goes, it goes to what Basley said, why are you doing it? Yeah, um, and we, we pioneered so many things. So if it wasn't for Basley and his FA stuff, then would there be other Jamaats involved with the, the training of the, the football cap, football uh, football coaches and uh, mm. um, and so forth. So we, 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 we like to help. And we, until today, I think we went to a recent tournament and we had two Jamaats come up to us and say, how did you go about your rebrand? And we're scheduling uh, meetings with them just to help them through. We're, we're happy to help anybody because, of course, it's for the community. So, so it, again, that's, that's um, interesting because I think you've probably driven a lot of the internal networking and sort of growing the brand internally and you've probably done the external bit you know and growing the brand externally um and brought it to to where it is today and you know um i think it would be remiss of me not to thank you both for the i mean i've seen it genuinely from a personal level how much work that's been put in by yourselves by the team the immediate team behind you that like the immediate family members of that team I won't name them because they don't like their names being mentioned. One might have been mentioned already. But they they work a lot behind the scene. And I have seen them, you know, pick up litter at like 1 a.m. And, and put digs out from a van into the mosque kitchen at 2 a.m. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, that you've, you're right, that friend circle bit. But it's also a dedicated team, you know. So inshallah, Allah rewards you, your family. Uh, and your your friends and their families and you know it's quite inspiring to see how a group of friends has taken leadership uh, at the very high, highest level of sport within the community okay so we're going to do the quick fire round now and i'm going to ask the questions one question and maybe sip then you answer first and abbas you answer second ideally you don't have the same answer but let's see okay. some 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 i'll let you get away with okay so your favorite foods sip then Express burger. <laughs> that's not a food. That's a rest. That's a place to eat. A oh, takeaway. Okay, okay fine, fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. He, he didn't even hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> so then let's try again. <laughs> Express burger is not a food. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Your favorite food? Nihari. That's quite burger. Diff- burger. Okay. Very, very political and diplomatic. Fair enough. One inspiration in your lives? My father. My dad. Amazing. Your favorite place in general? So this is like a non-Islamic. Dubai is the only place I've been to. Okay. The shop. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, the shop. Fair enough. Yeah, okay. And your favorite place from an Islamic perspective, like a Ziyarat or Umrah, any specific place? Uh, Makkah. Makkah. Uh, I'm going to have to go Karbala. Karbala. Okay. Mashallah. Football teams? Man United. You cancelled. Newcastle. Shossi. <laughs> okay. Um, I've, I've already asked you kind of what you would tell people, but what's the best advice you've been given? Any, any small nugget that someone's told you and you stuck with you? Well, I, I, I have two. Uh, somebody uh, told me that you can be the sweetest dharam from heaven but you'll always get that one person who doesn't eat dharam and they'll want an apple even though you're the food of jannah okay dharam is pomegranate yeah and i and that that really yeah m- makes you like yeah okay you know what and you the always second be was of the day. yeah and the second one was uh, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor okay 
That's that's interesting. And then Sip then back to you, the top thing on your bucket list. Express <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and this one's for you, Abbasalian. Maybe we can go sip then afterwards. The top thing on your bucket list. Uh the Norwegian fjords. Okay. Uh to go to Iraq. Okay. Inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Now, this one, I will come to you second, but you cannot say Express Burger. The fa- your favorite restaurant in Peterborough. Okay, you can say whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to say I don't care what you said. Express Burger. <laughs> I, oh, I, I I'll probably go with Medina. Medina. Okay, but there's a couple now. I think uh, the one on Lincoln Road. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and your favorite restaurant outside of Peterborough doesn't have to be Leicester. Uh, Tipu Sultan's in Birmingham. Okay, creative. I'm gonna go with. There's a golf course in Toronto and they serve halal breakfast and that has been the best halal breakfast I've ever had in my life. Okay, interesting. And final question, I'll start with you, Abbasali. Volleyball or golf? <laughs> I, I, okay. A golf. <laughs> and Siptain, volleyball or express burger? Express, express burger. <laughs> And Siptain, volleyball or Express Burger? Express Burger after volleyball. <laughs> Asant. Okay, so that brings us to the end of another really interesting podcast. This time we had two guests, the pioneers of Husseini Sports Club, the revivers of Shia Sports, brother Siptain Damji and brother Abbasli Damani. Thank you so much for your time. It's been really interesting and intriguing to see the journey you've been on the highs, the lows, the the fun times, the more challenging times. But overall, you know, you have brought the club from here to here. And I pray that you take the club even further and leave it in a place and leave your legacy in a way that the next generation can then take it even higher. Um, I said at the start of this episode that both of their marhum fathers who had a profound impact on the community um, are still truly missed. Um, and two individuals whose legacy we still see carrying on in the faces of Siptain and Abbasili. So to end this episode, can I request the Surah Fatiha for Marhum Onali Uncle Damji and Marhum Hussein Ali Uncle Jessa Damani Al-Fatiha. Thank you very much and inshallah we'll see you at the next HIC podcast. Wassalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.